Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Fortnite Horror map. And we are playing... I don't know if it's a sequel or prequel. I think it might be a sequel. This is called... Alverton Hills... Livingston. Not Asylum. Livingston. Different map. So it's different. This is created by SundayCW. The code's right there. Big Rudeo pointing right at it. Can't miss it. Alright. The description says... One to four players. Adventure. You were sleeping when the sound of your lamp breaking woke you up. A strange compulsion made you go outside. That's when you met her. And who is this woman we met? I got no clue. Turned my HUD off, as you can see. I turned cinematics, uh, sound effects, and everything else up all the way so I can get scared. And without further ado, let's get right into it. 360 boy. Look at that, Alverton Hills, Livingston. A sequel to Alver Alverton Hills Asylum. I was right, this is a sequel. So this is the sequel to the Asylum one. Nice, nice. I don't really remember the, Asy the Asylum one, but I've played it and I've recorded it and I've uploaded it. So I'll make sure to have that link of that video in the description of me playing through it. Okay. Check his socials for more maps. There you go. Holy, oh my God. What, what are you? Oh, I'm sitting here. This is the person sitting. All right, let's start from the beginning. Do you want anything to drink? No, thank you. I uh, I remember waking up to. Ah, oh, what happened? Huh? Good morning. What happened? Huh? January first. Oh, <laughs> I can't read already. <laughs> January twenty-first, nineteen sixty-one. Sound of your lamp breaking jumps you out of bed. Oh god. Chapter one. Oh this is oh this is the chapter we're doing right now. Relive. I I like this already. Relive. Something kept pulling me to take a walk outside. My parents were home. Do you know what might what have happened to them? That's what we're here to find out. Let's keep going. What happened next? Read note. Morning, darling. Your father and I will be out of town for the weekend. We left you some change to order yourself something later today. Oh, how nice. Do you think they were the ones who write who who write this message? They were the ones to write this message. I can't read. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have graduated school, man. <laughs> it was 3 in the morning sharp. Wow, 3 a.m. Wait, that's bad. 3M's always bad. Locked doors require a key to be unlocked. Only doors with an image of a key can be unlocked. Oh. They forgot to leave me a key for the front door here. I started looking around for a spare one. I was sure we had one laying around. Okay. Oh, I found it. Found my key. Whoa. Okay, we're leaving. We're done. <laughs> I never questioned what I was doing out here, and especially that noise that came from the bushes when I picked up the key. Well, when I picked the key up. I'm switching my words for some reason. You think it was her? Must have been. You can unlock doors with the key by aiming at the keyhole. What? That's so cool. Okay. I heard a trunk pop open the moment I stepped outside. I knew I wasn't alone. And that's when I first saw her. She was unpacking her luggage from a blue car. What kind of car was it? I don't know the first thing about cars. It was blue. New model. Blue and recent. Got it. You weren't around for... Uh, you weren't from around here. I wanted to offer my help with your luggage, but I froze. You began to sing softly as I got close, and you were soft singing. It was magical. It kept pulling me closer to you. I wanted to learn more about you. No, I needed to know more about you. Your singing let me. Your singing let me know that you wanted me to know more. What? I was headed this. Way anyway, so no foul, right? <laughs> I'm talking to an imaginary friend. 
Begin following her footsteps, keeping my distance. Smart. You left this trail of smell that resembled the ocean's breeze. It was beautiful. You were getting ready to cross the street. This would be the first time we'd be close to each other. I began to walk faster towards the road crossing. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There it was, standing next to you, ready to cross the street. We didn't speak, but you wanted me to know your name through your singing. I don't know how or why I was never able to process how unrealistic this was. That she was able to speak to me telepathically. All that matters is that she broke out of it. Don't kick yourself too hard for it. They've been doing this for a long time. Okay, how about this part? Let's change it up, kid. What did she look like? What was she wearing? Clothes. Probably. She was blonde, wore a black hoodie, denims, shoes. I remember noticing the price tag was hanging out the back of her pants. You think she shopped nearby? Possibly, yeah. Maybe she, oh, maybe over at Danny's. We'll find out. The singing kept getting louder. All these thoughts kept running through my head about continuing to follow her, loving her, running away with her. She wanted us to be together, but she told me she had to do a couple of things before her and I could run away. What? She wanted me to. What did she want you to do? Break into Mr. Porter's place. That's all we have to do then. We can be together. You want us to be together, right? Chapter 2. Unconditional Love. Oh my god, I gotta break into this man's house. Sorry, sorry sir. I'm gonna have to break into your house. Because, you know, I'm in love with this crazy blonde lady who uh, is probably using me for something. She asked me to break into your place, sir. She didn't ask. She made you. No, need you to get embarrassed over it. You weren't in control. Even though I could feel bushes scratching me all over, she guided the way, clearing the path for me to see where I was going. This woman crazy. What is she? Everything felt right at the time, justified. She let me know that your bodyguard was in the backyard. Wait, how did she... Fuck. How did she know? Uh, I had the choice to either knock him out with one of these cans or pick the keys from his pocket. So what did you do? <laughs> I pickpotted his key to sneak into the house. <laughs> Next, I noticed you had some cameras installed around your house and I had to avoid them. You know you don't have to explain everything like you are in a heist film, right? Now, da -da -da. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. three, two, one. Whoa. Oh, we made it, boys. Da -da. That's what the key's for. Okay. Close that. I had to look for anything in here that, c that I could use to open the door to the master bedroom. I found a gun. There's a... I'm sorry. Okay. The ring. Bring me the ring. Sorry. Before I knew, I heard sirens outside. The... Outside, the footsteps of officers barging into the house, I had nowhere to go. I believe that she was the one that had called the police. She wanted to make sure you were considered an escape, an escapee, so no one would have questioned your disappearance. Everyone would have simply assumed you were on the run from the police. Let's continue. I went out and dropped my gun. Oh, 
come on, we both know that's not what happened. We talked about this. Nothing bad will happen to you. I could promise you that. If you know what the hell happened, then why do we have to go through this? I need a drink. I'll be back in a minute. Alright, I'm back. Ah! Protect the ring. Don't let anyone get in your our way. Alright, I'm gonna have to put your homeboy down. Ah, he got me on my shoulder. Well, what did you think would happen? Trying to pick up a gun from the floor. He shot me first. I didn't pick it up. Chapter 3. Run, boy, run. I can't keep running. The pain on my shoulder is getting worse. I need to rest and patch myself up. Mr. Porter? Mr. Porter, can you hear me? It feels like I'm trapped in my memory. I need to keep going. I need to remember everything. The loss of blood is starting to... I'm losing color in my eyes. Whoa. The double vision. Whoa. You hit the ground. Unconscious. Until the sound of her singing woke you up. Noah. Wait, I'm Noah? Oh, this is her? She eve. He quickly jumped up, gasping for air. <gasps> As if she had just brought you back to life. Did I die? You began to look around with your hand on your chest, knowing very well that your heart was wasn't beating less than five less than a minute ago. So I was dead? I need to find medicine. Help me, Lillian. Help me. I just need to find a yeah, out of the way. Alfredton Veterinary Clinic. Thank you. I need to find bandages to patch myself up temporarily. I left the door open for you. Hurry. I feel like I'm doing something so illegal. Empty. Alright, she told me to hurry. And I'm gonna hurry. For you, Lillian. I'll do any... That's a body bag. Oh, God. Someone's office. Oh. Dr. Flint, I've left you a case with something that arrived in my mail a couple of hours ago. I need you to know more about it. Call me soon. This way. And here lies my love for you. That's a lot of blood. I don't, I don't think this is going to work out for us. You look inside to see multiple photos of you displayed on the wall. However, the spell that she had on you had your judgment clouded, making you unable to realize that this was a sort of ritual. Wait, what? I need to leave town. If I'm not mistaken, there's a car shop around the corner. Maybe I could break in and find the keys to a vehicle. Coming home, Lillian. Oh, we're in the world. Mm -hmm. Hey, friend, how can I help you? Am I hallucinating? I, uh, looking to get a car. Well, all right, what's your budget looking like, buddy? I've got around 2,000 to spend. Hmm, we don't really have any cars under 2,000, but I could cut you a deal. Meet my buddy on the door if you, on to your left. Let me get the door for you. Thanks. Hey, you're here for the car, right? I've been fixing this bad boy up for a while. But I overheard the conversation out front, so you seem to be in a bit of a hurry. You can have it for free. Free. Simply fill out the deal on from form on your left, and you're free to go. Alright. Chapter 4. The Deal. You feel a cold splash on your face, then a huge burn on the side of your face. You snap out of it, realizing Mr. Porter had splashed cold water on your face, then proceeded to slap you as hard as he could. Ow! Kid, who did you sign a paper with? What did he look like? A robot? You wiped some of the water off your face. They looked like robots. I thought I was hallucinating. Did you sign it? What did... 
what did it read? I, I, I signed it, but Lily didn't want me to read. I was all too, it was all too blurry. But I read it. I read it. Listen, kid. Whatever you signed, my son signed too. He had received mail from an unknown address with information about six kids escaping an asylum. Thing is, no such thing ever happened. He was greedy. Didn't look into it. He wanted something good to write on. He wrote for the local post. The letter had a simple deal signing. Meant he would tell anyone else that he wouldn't tell anyone else he signed. Packed up and went, stole my car, never came back. Sorry about that, man. Sucks for your son. Wherever you went, you're going, Noah. I don't know how it all works, but listen to me. Leaving Alfredton Lake. I'm leaving the lake. This is a lake? You have to remember this. From this day forward, you're Charles Livingston, a British teenager from London. Wait, why am I... Why? You keep telling yourself that this might twist and turn the deal. You make yourself believe you are Charles. You got a kid. It might break the deal. Okay, I guess I'm Charles now. I should have told Noel to protect him. I kept researching, but I thought all of this was over. That I was the only one. I didn't want to scare him. You find my son. You protect each other. I've been through something similar myself when I was younger. I wish I had someone by my side. I once woke up in a forest, freezing to death. I wasn't alone. A Wendigo was after me. I lived in the forest for months before I was able to kill it. As soon as I did, a very tall man in a coat came up to me and offered to give me food for a deal. I hadn't eaten in a week. Dang, man. Before I knew it, he was unconscious laying on the snow. I had knocked him out from panic. If I hadn't been isolated for so long, I might have signed. I didn't stop running for hours. The snow kept slowly dying out, and before I knew it, I ended up in my backyard. I had disappeared in the morning, and it was home by noon. Seven months had passed for me, but I was home in less than six hours in real time. But no has been missing for three days now. Maybe whatever he's going through is a lot tougher than it scares the hell out of me. As you open the door, the ring you had stolen from Mr. Porter began to glow and the spell had been silenced. You realized you were under a siren's alert. Lillian was not who she said she was. She put me through all this so I'd be weak, unable to fight. You kept walking, pretending you were still under her lure. You were trying to get close because she forgot that you still had one thing. Mr. Porter's gun. That's right. As you began to get closer, she started reaching for your leg. You're ready. Be you began shouting as you withdrew your pistol and to unleash hell on her. Eat this! <laughs> the sound of distant bullets and a piercing scream wakes you up. <gasps> Where am I? Okay. This is okay. Remember what Mr. Porter said. You feel a soft touch on your neck, as if someone is checking your pulse. I can get through this. I can get home. The hard part's over. Welcome to Alverton Hills Asylum. Follow the road up and register yourself. We can't wait to meet you. I'm no longer Noah Rays. I am Charles Livingston. I'm from England. I lived in England. Gotcha. I'm Charles Livingston. I am Charles Livingston, and I'm from England. That is who I am. That is who I am. He has no pulse. No, is isn't breathing. You softly pull your fingers back from his neck. What? The only way I can find them is if I go back and relive my experience with killing the Wendigo. To be continued, Overton Hills Wendigo. This will end the game. Yo, that one was actually pretty cool. It wasn't even that scary, but the story is amazing. I love it. It's crazy. All right. 
I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.